Ông quay cho. Please be seated. Ông chuẩn bị ra các mình to cái chậm đa ca này thì thì nâng đòi bị ca chuẩn từ cầm bị bị ca bị cái lục nuôi chi về về kiểm tra từ nuôi chi is defence to those questions to this witness you may proceed. Vous pouvez la défense va donc pouvoir poser ses questions au témoin. Je vous en prie, maître. Thank you, Mr. President, and good morning to everyone in and around the courtroom. And especially good morning to you, Maître Mr. Kung Kim. Thank you for being uh, Bonjour, with us Président. today. Bonjour à tous. Uh, Bonjour, my name is Jasper Pao. I'm uh, the International Council for Nguyen Chia, together with my national colleague, Mr. Son Arun. And I will be asking you questions uh, relating to your earlier statements to the OCIJ and to the BCCAM representatives. I will try to speak slowly for the benefit of the translators, and my first questions will relate to the period before the fall of Phnom Penh in 1975. You have stated that before Phnom Penh fell, there was heavy fighting and there were heavy casualties on both sides. Can you give us an estimate as to for how long you were actually in combat before you liberated Phnom Before the final attack on Phnom Penh, as I said earlier, initially I was a messenger to carry rice supply to the front of the field and messages between the front and the rear. Le front et and sometimes when I was carrying rice to the front of the field, I noticed the gunfires and the shelling. So I spent my life as a messenger for two months, and later on I was assigned to the front of the field. And it took about two months for the battle in order to finally attack and seize the Penh. At that time, there were bombardments, area bombardments, and armor tanks. And I was at my spearhead, and during the search of the attack by soldiers, there were casualties. Each time, there were between 20 to 30 casualties, and that's how I observed at my direction of spearhead. And do you know who conducted the aerial bombardments of your troops? Qui a fait le bombardement aérien de vos troupes? De which were given to Lonel side. Qui avait été donné and while you were in battle, Question. did you find out what the Lonol soldiers would do with Khmer Rouge soldiers that were captured? Did you, for example, see what happened to them? I could not grasp the situation whether the Lonol captured the Khmer Rouge soldiers or the Khmer Rouge soldiers captured the Lonol soldiers. Could you be a bit more specific? I will try to um, clarify. Did you see or did you experience whether or not the Lonol soldiers ever captured Khmer Rouge soldiers? During the battlefield, I did not see 
if any other Khmer Rouge soldier was captured Ouf, by the Lono side. Si because the Khmer Rouge soldiers were absolute. Car if any of them were captured by Lono, they believed that they uh, would be tortured. So for that reason, they fought till their death rather than being captured alive. And question. another question relating to um, the battle before um, uh, Phnom Penh fell. Avant la chute de Phnom. Did no? Let me rephrase that question. I will. I will drop that question and move on to the next topic. We are now speaking about orders that you may have received before Phnom Penh fell. And on the case file, there is an interview um, with Mr. Heng Samrin, um, with Mr. Ben Kiernan, dated uh, the 2nd of December 1991. And for the reference, uh, the E3 number is E3 slash 1568. English ERM is 00651886. And Khmer ERM is 00713958. Just by way of introduction, um, Heng Samrin commanded a division of the East Zone that arrived in Phnom Penh on April 17 in the morning. And he has spoken to Ben Kiernan Et about his experience during son experience, uh, the conquest of Phnom Penh. La pour Phnom Penh avec ben but my question relates to the period before that. And Je I will quote a statement a uh, by Mr. Heng Samrin about this period. And I quote, Et je vais citer at that time, we received plans from the center, from high levels, des plans du just des to engage in production after liberation, to grow rights, to support ourselves, and under no circumstances to ask the population for anything. The army had to support itself, work hard to grow rice and plant for other crops to support itself. This was the order to the army. So we worked hard, and in my division, we planted crops and vegetables, and even gave some to the people to eat as well. And of course, my question to you, Mr. Kun Kim, is uh, did you receive similar orders? Did you receive orders to not ask the population for anything? President, witness, please wait. The prosecution, you may proceed. Your Honours, we would object to this technique being employed by my learned friend. Um, the technique, technique of reading to this witness the, an unsworn statement of another individual from a completely different uh, unit, and then asking this witness whether similar things happen to him is not proper. It's an attempt to influence or guide the witness in a particular direction. Um, the other statement has no relevance. Uh, my learned friend can ask this witness direct questions from his own experience and from his own extensive statements. Mr. President, um, with all due respect, Monsieur that's Monsieur exactly Monsieur what I'm doing. I'm asking this witness about his experience. It is relevant. Mr. Heng Samrin participated in the liberation of Phnom Penh. He was in uh, the Khmer Rouge army. Yesterday, we saw the prosecution trying to yeah. elicit from the witness uh, statements as to what was Khmer, Khmer Rouge policy. Rouge. Clearly, it is relevant that another high-ranking division commander has received orders to not ask the population for anything. That at least begs the question uh, whether or not this witness has received similar orders. I'm not making this up. This is in a statement uh, that is part of the case file and on which, uh, by the way, the prosecution wants to rely. Again, 
whether or not elle-même this witness received some more orders is relevant than I uh, would like to ask the question. Tout à fait pertinent et j'aimerais pouvoir poser ma question au témoin. Merci. President, the objection the and its ground by the prosecution is grounded and sustained. Therefore, the defense counsel cannot use the interviews of other people as the basis for your question through a witness appearing before the chamber. Comparaison devant la chambre. However, you can Mais put other questions related to the experience by the witness directly related to the relevant facts. Au témoin sur son expérience directe des faits pertinents. I I'm not sure I understand your ruling, Mr. President, so before I proceed, um, I would ask for clarification. Can we now not base questions on interviews that are part of the case file and that have an E3 number? Yet another refinement, excuse me, another refinement of the case law of this chamber. So, President uh, Council Michael Canavas, you may proceed. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I just wish to point out that in the past I have used the exact Monsieur same President, technique with other witnesses where I was able to show uh, statements uh, and there was no objection by the prosecution and the trial chamber did allow that. So now it would appear 
that there is a different uh, position being taken by the prosecution, la, a different ruling by the trial chamber, and frankly, not only is chambre, it confusing, but it is not confusion, in the interest of justice. Thank you. Okay, Mr. President, the prosecution, do you may proceed. Mr. President, um, thank you. I just want to be clear Merci, for the Monsieur record, we're, we're certainly clair, not objecting to defence using statements of other witnesses which relate to facts on which the witness before us is testifying. The reason I, I rose to object is because a fact was put to the witness cela, that had nothing to do with his prior testimony. Uh, it related to life under the Khmer Rouge after the forced evacuations of the city. There was no nexus with the evidence that this witness had been given. Um, the witness had not been asked anything about life uh, and, and production after the fall of Phnom Penh. It was a completely new topic being explored by counsel. My objection was simply that it was not proper to start an examination of an entire new topic by reference to statements of other witnesses. Uh, so I want to be clear that we, we si certainly do not object donc, to counsel uh, using nous statements of other witnesses uh, that relate to facts on which this witness is testifying. It was a technique uh, in this case that we, that we found uh, improper and that was the reason for our objection. C'est pourquoi nous sommes levés pour nous y opposer. Le Président, le juge de la Verne, je vous prie de prendre la parole. In order to set light on this issue. Oui, merci, Monsieur le Président. Yes, je crois que ce que la Chambre President. voulait souligner ici, c'est qu'il y avait peut-être une difficulté dans la façon dont la question avait été formulée et uh, dans la référence qui avait été utilisée à uh, un entretien donné par M. Eng cette référence ne paraissait pas utile pour poser la question, puisque le témoin aurait d'abord dû être interrogé en fonction de ses propres connaissances. Les déclarations de M. Hexamrin ne sont pas directement en lien avec les connaissances éventuelles de ce témoin. Are not related Donc, le témoin to this peut répondre à la question testimony. telle qu'elle avait été posée, so the et tout d'abord en se fondant sur ses connaissances. Si le cas échéant, il y a ensuite des contradictions que la knowledge. défense souhaite exploiter, pourquoi pas Si la défense souhaite sur des inconsistences observées par le testimony de ce witness, ils sont libres de faire ça. The defense counsel, you may now proceed with your further questions. La défense, vous pouvez poursuivre votre interrogatoire. Just to be sure that um, I understand. J'aimerais être certain d'avoir bien compris. Our position would be that we have in the statement of Mr. Heng Samrin clearly exculpatory la déposition, um, position enfin, dans l'entretien avec under which orders il y a the Khmer Rouge des soldiers operated à des charges sur la façon dont no les Khmer Rouge circumstances fonctionnaient, des ordres qui étaient donnés pour rien. On ne devrait jamais, en aucune circonstance, demander à la population de contribuer à l'effort de guerre. Et je suis simplement en train de vérifier que ces ordres venaient de haut rang et je voudrais savoir si ces ordres avaient été communiqués à des gens de rang inférieur comme M. Kuhn Kim. C'est ce que je cherche à faire. Je dirais donc que c'est une chose de pertinent dans ces ordres établis. Si les stratégies positives de la Khmer Rouge ont été transmises à des gens de la hiérarchie inférieure, je pense que nous devrions être en mesure de poursuivre une série de questions à cet effet. Et je pense que nous devrions être en mesure de poursuivre une série de questions à cet effet. Le président. Pardon. Il n'y a pas d'objection à la question en tant que telle. Il n'y a pas d'objection à la question de cet ordre-là au témoin. Ce qui paraissait un peu curieux, c'est d'utiliser une affirmation faite par un autre témoin dès le début de ce questionnement. Si, par la suite, vous avez effectivement des contradictions qui apparaissent, 
you find any inconsistencies, subsequently uh, you may refer uh, to another document in a case file. The relevance bon of the question is not absolute. De, de and you are free to change the type of questions you have to ask. Furthermore, utilisation de documents qui sont we do not object to you using documents in the case file to lay the foundation for your questions. Thank you, Judge Leverini, that clarifies things. That clarifies things. Merci, um, Mr. Kunkim, did you Monsieur receive Kunkim. orders while you were in ah, the oui. army Alors que vous to not ask the population for anything and to support yourself? Vous à ne pas, euh, la population une contribution et à, à subvenir à vos propres besoins. When I was a soldier at the front battlefield, I did not uh, front, receive uh, such order as to not to ask for food On from nous a pas people. De ne pas the orders that I received were to attack the enemy and nothing else. According to the excerpt I just read to you, um, in which Mr. Heng Samrin speaks about his experiences, he states that at that time, uh, we received plans from the center, from high levels, just to engage in production after liberation to grow rice, to support ourselves, and under no circumstances to ask the population for anything. The army had to support itself. End of quote. And I remind you that Mr. Heng Samrin was a uh, division commander at that time. Do you know whether or not your division commander, Mr. Un, si received e similar orders from the center, from high levels? Des ordres semblables du centre et des euh, échelons supérieurs. The plans prior to the attack on Phnom Penh was out of my grasp. Later on, when I was stationed at my assigned sector, I knew about the plan that some soldiers were allowed to work in a rice field and on local land. However, that was after the liberation of Phnom Penh, and I did not know about such a plan before the liberation of Phnom Penh. Thank you. That is um, a clear answer. But my specific question was, do you know whether or not your division commander, Un, received orders similar to the ones that Mr. Heng Samrin claims to have received? If you don't know, that is perfectly fine. Thank you, Mr. Kunkim. I did not know Réponse. because the rien. affairs of the division commander, I only knew that after division was liberated, ce que je sais, there was an arrangement for a company to work in a rice field in Anlong Thank you for that answer. More generally speaking, and you have, <coughs> excuse me, uh, more generally speaking, and you have spoken about this already yesterday and today, but I want to uh, make it clear. Did you, before or while entering Phnom Penh, ever received written orders? Or were ou avant, these orders always ou, transmitted orally? Have you received any orders by written, or were they always orders verbal? During that Réponse. time, 
The orders were not in writing. Les ordres n'étaient pas communiqués par écrit. The transmission was through meeting and On it was done orally. Lors de réunion, c'était verbal. And before Question. the liberation of Phnom Penh, while you were advancing on Phnom Penh, Alors que vous avanciez, would you report it every time that you shot at a soldier? Would you report it to a superior, for example? Chaque soldat que vous touchiez par balle à vos supérieurs? At that time, I was still a quite young and I was a combatant, so I did not make any report to the echelon. The report was made by my superior. C'est mon supérieur qui lui faisait rapport. And yesterday, you told us, um, and I'm quoting from the transcript. Je cite on ici page 77, page 77 um, trial day de, one two three, um, jour the third line. 123, troisième ligne. Yesterday you stated an exception des débats d'hier. Vous avez dit hier, donc je cite. Upon receiving the order, I was in both the rear, the rear Après and avoir reçu the battlefield. À et I au never front. met civilians. Je pas I only encountered soldiers. Je vu que des soldats. We clashed with the soldiers. Nous, nous We never saw des civilians in the battlefield. And, end of quote. Just to be clear, is that an accurate statement that you personally did not see civilians in the battlefields? Vous vraiment pas vu de civils quand vous étiez sur les champs de bataille? But in the battlefield that we engage in at the outskirts of Phnom Penh, dans les champs de bataille, en périphérie there were various de Phnom Penh, military barracks il y avait at the outside parameters of the city, à de la ville. and there was no civilian at all. Il n'y avait aucun civil. As for the soldiers, they were only present only by the arrangement, and there was no presence of the civilian of any civilian at all. Ils étaient présents, mais il n'y avait pas de civils. And then, when you enter the city, question. You have testified that you were charged with evacuating people from their houses. And I would like to read you a quotation from your statement to DZ Cam. It is document number 19.96. The English ERN is 00633875. And the Khmer ERN is. 00054835. And you state in that interview, some people in the houses at that time even owned guns with an experience to use them. Some people shot, shot at our soldiers first while we were climbing their house, and others threw hand grenades on us while we were walking on the street. End of quote. So here you speak about people in the houses uh, at that time that even owned guns with an experience to use them. Could you tell us, were these people civilians? Were they soldiers? Or were they perhaps soldiers dressed as civilians? Or could you not tell the difference? Regarding the grenade throwing oui, à ce propos, that happened after the majority of the people had been evacuated, and there were those people who were living upstairs or on the upper floors, there were those people who were living upstairs or on the upper floors, there were those people who were living upstairs or on the upper floors, there were those people who were living upstairs or on the upper floors, there were those people who were living upstairs or on the upper floors, there were those people who were living upstairs or on the upper floors, there were those people who were living
and based on the plans that I received from the upper echelon, that is from the platoon, that we had to clear those houses at the assigned sector, and those people who were there, Ceux qui they threw grenades at us. Nous ont of course, we did not see grenades. them. We only nous saw nous grenades being thrown at us. Then there was an order for us to, to go upstairs. De monter. And among, we saw that among those people, sometimes we saw gens, a group of three or four oui, people, and two, two among them would uh, dress in military uniform, uniform and the others would dress in a civilian civil. attire and our order was to smash them. So, is it a fair Donc, summary of your words to say that vous dire when you suis. went up into those apartments Lorsque vous you could vous avez monté not tell for sure who had been throwing grenades at you? Is that what you're saying? Discerner clairement qui euh, vous avez lancé des grenades. That's exact. Response. Response. After a grenade was thrown from above at our soldiers, étages, we soldats, identified uh, the location of the apartment where the grenade uh, was thrown as the location occupied grenade, by the enemies, et, uh, and we received orders and instructions to contain the area and then de, uh, uh, searched uh, the building for the people there. there. De procéder à la fouille and you have now pour y specified your answer to those people là. throwing grenades. You have also stated, as I just <coughs> quoted, that you that there were people in these houses that even owned guns with an experience to use them, and that some people shot at our soldiers first while we were climbing their house. Uh, Can you tell us who these people were that shot vos soldats at you? Alors que vous montiez dans les étages, vous pouvez dire que c'était des soldats qui ont effectivement tiré sur vous. Réponse. Response. Obviously, these people were soldiers. Manifestement, ces personnes-là étaient des soldats. After the ceasefire. Après le cessez le feu, or when the fire stopped, ou après l'arrêt des combats, other plutôt, people who used to be soldiers d'autres personnes remained qui avaient soldiers été soldats and fighting could still happen sont because en position uh, some et individuals des uh, would lieu still take arms and exchange fire. Parce que certains individus uh, étaient encore prêts uh, à prendre les armes et and à échanger des coups de feu avec nous. Question. Those soldiers that were shooting at you, would they dessus, all be wearing uniforms or had some of these the soldiers uniforms, changed or to de civilian clothing? Euh, euh, Response. Response. After the people were smashed, they were in military uniforms. Les personnes qui ont été écrasées portaient des uniformes militaires. Did you Question. ever hear during that time about de lone mole soldiers that took off their uniform and still dire continue to de fight Khmer Rouge? Avaient ôté leurs uniformes et continuaient à combattre les Khmer Rouges. Response. Réponse. At my location, I did not remember Là où seeing je me je any lone soldiers who uh, were wa wearing civilian clothes and civil fighting us. Et, uh, but indeed, there was incidents when the internal Khmer enemies uh, warring uh, the Avec des uh, left over de soldiers uh, with a uh, uniform by the Lono soldiers and then we could not identify one another and we mistakenly shot at each other. 
euh, entre eux. Certains de nos Thank soldats avaient enfilé des uniformes euh, des euh, soldats de l'ONLOL. On n'a pas pu faire spoke la différence non plus. Et donc, euh, on a tué certains um, de nos propres soldats. Je vous remercie de la défense. Were being donc, vous nous avez parlé And hier de la pratique. Quote from page 104 de la from the transcripts, um, on the, starting on the eighth line, which is time segment 15.26.07. And your statement is the following, I quote, the reality is that when the people were being evacuated, if there was no exchange fire from the other opponents or soldiers, then, then people would not be shot at. But if there was fire from among the civilians, then there would be soldiers inside and we would be ordered to shot at them. But if there were only pure civilians, Mais then we were not ordered de civils, to shoot nous them. Aucun ordre de tirer sur eux. So, end donc, of quote. Donc, fin de citation. Is it a fair summary of your answer to say that votre en if there was fire que si coming from somewhere, then you would be ordered to shoot at them. Vous aviez but if there were de only riposter, pure civilians, you would que, not si be ordered civils, to shoot at them. Vous pas de, euh, leur tirer dessus. Response. Réponse. People got injured uh, in the vicinity between Pregno and Phnom Penh because Phnom Penh. these people were caught during the fire ont été prises and dans les uh, in Phnom Penh we noted that uh, Penh, the situation was chaotic. Uh, situation chaotic I mean the movement uh, was uh, chaotic but th there was no fighting and later on a lot of people tard, almost the whole population of Phnom Penh had uh, been evacuated during the evacuation there was no gunfire or fighting but then And after people had been moved, de there de was still more fighting. Masse avait été évacué, les combats ont repris. And as you have testified um, before vous en avez as well, you or your unit encountered vous, former Lonol soldiers and um, anciens soldats de Lonol testified about Et this yesterday vous avez uh, sur during questioning hier, by the prosecution. De And I quote from page uh, 106, page 106 uh, line 23. Ligne 23. Your statement is, when we got to Phnom Penh, suivante, soldiers who did not resist Penh, and agreed to go along with the people being evacuated, they were spared. But those who resisted, Particularly those, who, those soldiers who were within the group, they did not retreat, so we had to shoot them. Dans les et ne, uh, pas en retraite, nous so, dû end of quote. Donc, fin de citation. You défense, donc, have also testified on this topic before uh, sur ce the representatives point. of DC CAM. And there's document number 19.96, English ERN is 00633878, and my ERN is 00054839, and on that page you state Everyone had to leave, including the soldiers of the previous uh, regime. As for the soldiers, if they took off their uniform, they would have a chance to live longer. But if they did not take off the uniform and resisted, they would be shot to death. Mm -hmm. Just to be clear on this issue, as far as your experience goes, When you vécu, 
encountered Lorsque Lon Nol soldiers. They were des soldats de Lon -Nol. given the chance to Ceci take off their uniform se voyait donner and then la possibilité they would be evacuated leur with the rest of the population. Et à ce moment -là, ils so that's évacués avec le reste what de your la experience population. was. Est-ce cela que vous avez vécu? Response. Réponse. During the time of the evacuation, Donc, la I de noted that people had to go to National Road Number 5 and national the population was mixed up with la soldiers, monks avec des and other uh, people. And, and uh, for the soldiers who were still seen wearing uniforms would only be allowed to uh, walk along with the whole population on the condition the that they surrendered their arms and uh, we allowed them to make sure that everyone left uh, Phnom Penh immediately. And as far as you could tell, so based on your experience, was that the policy of the Khmer Rouge soldiers to surrender, to let the Nolan soldiers surrender their arms and let them carry on their way? Response. I do not know Je ne sais pas the upper echelon's policy concerning la whether the soldiers were allowed to surrender en ce qui their arms. Le fait de and the, les armes. But for us, uh, the orders uh, were very precise that as long as the lors, people in uniform were armed and uniforme, did not surrender their armes, armes, they were subject to be shot at. But if they surrendered their arms, they could mingle with the population and move on. Thank you for that Merci. answer. Today, you already spoke about what people could bring along with them. You've been brief about it, so I want to ask you uh, a follow-up question. In your experience, could people transport their personal belongings if they desire to do so? Response. I saw that it was the case that people could carry with them le cas, their belongings, including jewelry affaires, or money, except guns. Tout sauf des armes. And did you see people carrying other belongings than jewelry or money? Did you see that they were free to uh, bring other belongings with them? Response. Response. During the evacuation, what I saw Pendant was that uh, people vu, were forced to leave the city, and indeed people did not volunteer to leave uh, the city, so many had to carry their belongings, uh, whatever they could grab uh, at that time. Some would have to push the carts uh, carrying their luggages, and some would have to go with their vehicles and other means of transportation. Thank you, that is clear. Another topic that was briefly discussed this morning is the following. You talked about the fact that the city was divided into 
different areas after the liberation of Phnom Penh. Different after the evacuation of Phnom Penh. Would you know into how many different areas Phnom Penh was divided after the liberation? Different Phnom Penh has been divided after the liberation. Response. Response. It is true to say that Phnom Penh was divided into several sections, que, uh, but I have no idea how many and which zone controlled which sections, because I was in charge of just a small block, and I could not even understand whether the other uh, groups uh, would be uh, occupying other blocks, and I had no knowledge of this other than the confined area where I took control. To be clear on this issue, the area that you controlled with your units after the liberation, was that the same area that you searched with your units during the evacuation of Phnom Penh? Response. When it comes to the evacuation, the division was in charge of the geographical la location and division of uh, labor. De la and for us, uh, we were in charge of the small uh, block, nous, and indeed it was our task to make sure that the people were evacuated from this area we controlled. Control. I think you've answered my question, but just to be sure, I will repeat it once more in a slightly different form. The area that you controlled with your units after the liberation of Phnom Penh, this small area that you did not leave, according to your statement, is that the same area that you searched on April 17 and the days following April 17, or was that perhaps a different section of the city? Response. When in Phnom Penh, our squads uh, under the platoon did notre not receive squad, any orders to evacuate the people as yet. But we noted that people were on the move already. Nous people could be seen walking at, in, in all directions. Uh, but then, at that moment, uh, we were told or ordered to help control the crowds. In particular, uh, control the crowds who were passing our area. But then we had another plan. This plan was rendered to us only after the majority of the people already had left the city. And this next plan is to clean um, or to make sure that the last person is leaving. Thank you. That clarifies things. Question. Je vous remercie. Ceci when you were in uh, this section of the city that was controlled by your unit, uh, you called it your own parameter. Vous avez appelé votre um, is why was it? not possible for you Pourquoi to leave that small part of the city. De vous éloigner de cette petite fraction de la ville. Response. Réponse. That was an order. That was a strict order Nous that wherever we remained, strictes. we had to remain uh, in that Area. If we were to step outside that confined area, we would be 
de ce périmètre, nous aurions été accusés d'indiscipline et d'avoir désobéi aux ordres. And how many soldiers were within this small section of the city that you could not leave? I know you've spoken about it before, but I would like to get a specific answer. Me donne une réponse spécifique cette fois-ci. Vous me donniez une réponse spécifique. Response. The soldiers who came to Phnom Penh in my own group, the number has been reduced to only seven people. The rest already perished during the fighting, and we had to control the area from Watnong to the north, and three groups were in charge of controlling these blocks, and uh, only the superiors would be allowed to uh, move from one place to another, but soldiers like us had to be in the same place at all times. And you've spoken about You've spoken about guarding Question. these blocks. Uh, vous avez parlé Could you give us an estimate as to how many blocks uh, we are speaking about? If you cannot, that is no problem. Pas possible, ça pas grave. Response. Response. For the task rendered by the company to the platoon, uh, we were pointed the geographical location, for example, from which juncture of the road to which particular area. So we indeed uh, uh, occupy several blocks. You mentioned that you occupied several blocks, but could you try to be a bit more specific as to the number of blocks your unit was guarding? Response. I note that the block under our supervision uh, were rather very small and I belong to the whole division but the, the division is divided into different portions including the smaller part as well as the platoon and the squad so our squad was uh, in control of even smaller confined area L'air à contrôler était and limité en fonction de cela. You just stated that your superiors que were allowed de to dire move que freely. Avaient le droit de se déplacer librement. Do you know whether the chairman of your division, Mr. was allowed to move freely in that part of the city that his division de la ville um, stayed in? Où se trouvait sa division? Response. Through my experience working for Division 310, which I received the pass, uh, the travel permit as well, and we had to also, uh, I knew that he, uh, Mr. Un, uh, could be traveling across uh, the whole area, uh, but the only thing I knew was that whenever he had to pass our block, uh, the, the area we controlled, then I would uh, be able to know and uh, help him, you know, um, coming through. So you say that Mr. Un was free to travel, 
Do you know whether he was free to travel in the city of Phnom Penh, or was he free to travel only in the section of the city that was controlled by his division, Division 310? Response. Réponse. The commander of the division Le could de la travel to different places. However, I do not know uh, je ne to sais what extent he could uh, feel free to travel because uh, my task uh, was, uh, as I indicated, uh, to station at uh, one location. And uh, I believe that he could have been traveling to attend meetings or meet other people elsewhere. Uh, but that's, une réunion, that's ailleurs. just my guess. Mais ça, uh, uh, so I may say that, that I don't, that I don't know. Que je Donc, fond, ma est, je ne Thank you for being uh, that specific. That was, uh, Merci very uh, helpful. And indeed, we do not want you to guess. Nous ne pas, uh, que vous des you say that you were vous confined to the section that your unit guarded. Did you have any idea what was happening in Phnom Penh outside the section that you were guarding? Response. I received, or, I received orders to stand guard days de and nights. Garde, jour et nuit. I was never informed of any other situation, Parce for example, what happened uh, outside uh, this confined area. So I was de ces lieux bien learning only about my duty, donc, which is to stand guard. And at night, devoir, I would only see garde, people I head of the platoon or company who would be coming to inspect the guard who perhaps dozed off during the time when they are on duty. So, is the fair summary of your words to say that you had very limited knowledge as to what was happening in Phnom Penh as a whole? Response. <laughs> it is true to say so uh, that at that time I was very young. I was about 16 and 17 years old and the position I held was very low and uh, with that I could not uh, be supposed uh, to know what happened or whether there were any plans uh, by the superior. I only knew what I supposed to know at that time I, uh, in my capacity. Thank you. And question, merci. I am sorry that I am returning to the issue, but I have a, a, a question remaining as to what exactly you did when you entered Phnom Penh, and then more specifically, I'm interested to know in which region of Phnom Penh you were operating when uh, you entered Phnom Penh on April 17. And I'm, trying, I'm going to try to make it slightly more specific for you to see if I um, can make myself more clear in this way. You have stated, Mr. 
Kim Vous avez déclaré, Your unit Kim, was votre unité in charge of guarding avait la charge d'assurer la garde small blocks de plusieurs buildings petits euh, blocs d'immeubles ou quartiers Watpnom. au nord de Watnom. When you entered Phnom Penh Lorsque vous avez on April pénétré 17, dans Phnom Penh le 17 avril, and when you helped et lorsque with vous the avez eva eva evacuation of Phnom Penh, aidé à assurer l'évacuation de Phnom Penh, did that take place est que around or in the neighborhood of these uh, small blocks of buildings dans le voisinage de ces petits Watnom? blocs ou quartiers d'immeubles au nord de euh, Watplum. Response. Réponse. I already testified that during the three days when the early three days when we came to Phnom Penh, I did not engage in the evacuation of the people. I saw them being evacuated for sure, but there was no plan rendered to us to help evacuate the people. Our task at that time was to move to our location as soon as possible. And after that, after the people had already been left, we were tasked with cleaning, with removing the remaining people who still remained in their houses and apartments. And that uh, we were informed that some people were still hiding in the apartments and they did not want to leave. So with that, we received the order to cut the water supply and to make sure people frustrated and had to come down and leave. La fourniture d'eau courante, ce qui a obligé ces gens à finalement descendre et partir. Again, Question. Eh bien, cela clarifie les choses à nouveau. Just one follow-up question Et to make sure we de, de fully understand. Pour être sûr bien compris, you stated that vous avez déclaré on April 17, que le 17 avril, in the days after, your task was to get dans les to your location suivi, votre tâche était as soon as possible. Votre objectif aussi rapidement que possible. When you speak about that location, Lorsque vous parlez de cet objectif, are you speaking about that section of the city que vous parlez de la partie de la that ville, you later guarded this small section où vous avez with monté la garde, uh, several blocks donc, of buildings north of Vatnum. Response. When I approached Phnom Penh, the arrangement was made by the company, and we were pointed to the location where we would station. And again, during the chaotic situation of the evacuation, I was not engaged in helping moving all the population out of the city. I was only tasked with making sure that I and the group in the squad moved to the location as indicated uh, immediately, and uh, during these early three days, uh, we did not receive any order to evacuate uh, the population, and the plan to evacuate uh, the city was in the indeed rendered by the upper echelon to other area, other section, other than uh, our squad or battalion. The president intervenes. Uh, council, thank you very much. Uh, and Mr. Merci. Witness, we also thank you. But it is now appropriate Merci. moment Merci. for the lunch adjournment. The chamber will adjourn until 1.30 p.m. Court officer is now instructed to assist the witness and his jury counsel during the adjournment and have him return to the courtroom by 1.30 p.m. Counsel for Mr. Nunez, you remain standing and you may proceed.
Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, our client, Mr. Nunchia, would like to follow this afternoon's proceedings from his holding cell as he is suffering from a headache, back pain, and a lack of concentration. And we have the waiver, and we will submit it to the GFA. The President, uh, the Chamber notes the request uh, by Mr. Nuentia through his counsel, in which he has requested that he be excused and allowed to observe the proceedings from his holding cell due to his health concerns. L'accusé invoque des raisons de santé pour cette demande. The Chamber therefore grants such request. Mr. Nunchi is now allowed to observe the proceedings from his holding cell for the remainder of the day, and that uh, the chamber notes uh, Mr. Nunchi has expressly waived his right to participate directly in the court room, and the chamber would like uh, counsels for Mr. Nunchi to submit the waiver by Mr. Nunchi, given some print or signed by him to the chamber in due course. AV unit is now instructed to ensure that the AV equipment is well connected to the holding cell so that Mr. Nunchi can observe the proceedings from there for the remainder of the day. And uh, security personnel are now instructed to bring Mr. Nunchi and Kilsumpon to their respective holding cell and have Mr. Kilsumpon return to the courtroom by the afternoon session when we resume. Some Jane Groucho.